Hi, this is Paul Alcorn with Tweak Town. We're here at Flash Memory Summit 2013 doing interviews. And right now in the booth, we have Adrian Proctor, the VP of Marketing with Viking Technology. There's a lot of different, or a lot of buzz over around their booth right now because of their new NVDEM technology. Things are pretty busy over there. Everybody wants to see it. So could you give us a few words about your new NVDEM? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so NVDEM is a DRAM interface, DDR3 interfaced, non-volatile DIM, meaning that when power is lost from a server or storage array, the, the contents of the DRAM uh, remain. And this is used really for primarily for a cache in storage environments and enterprise server um, applications where the critical information on DRAM cannot be lost in a power fail or system crash. Also, NVDIM uh, affords systems that utilize SSD in huge performance enhancements and increases by, uh, by utilizing DRAM speeds and latencies compared to flash and SSD. And so what we're seeing is, is this kind of evolution where we were using SSDs as cache for hard disk drives. Correct. But then, you know, SSDs inherently, man, has some limited write endurance. So now we're seeing people using technologies and kind of a migration towards an expansion of DDR caching. And almost essentially caching for the SSDs as well, correct? Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's always been a form of DRAM caching on RAID cards and on HBAs. Absolutely. Now, uh, now with access to the DRAM channel, which is arguably the fastest place on the system where you can access uh, the data, having non-volatile memory on the DRAM channel at 12 gigabytes per second allows you to cache up extremely fast without any worry of endurance because DRAM you can write to practically infinitely. Practically infinitely. And, and, and then in the event of a power outage, it just flushes all of that data back down and when you reboot it's just going to restore it comes that data. Back. Exactly. There is integrated in the NVDIM subsystem there's both DRAM and flash so we would save from the DRAM the contents into the flash SSD on the module and then when power comes back up it pushes it back into DRAM and it's ready for the system. And you can just use that in memory compute space for anything like you said uh, bandwidth 12 gigabytes a second and then what kind of IOPS can we expect from this type of device? About 1.5 million per and that's 12 gigabytes per second per NVDIM. Per you put two or four in there. And, it, and the great thing about about you utilizing RAM is there really is no bus contention. So you, you 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 realize better scaling when you add more devices. You know, with SSDs and things like that, you, you don't necessarily get linear scaling. But with Correct. NVDIM technology, if you get 1.4 with one, you're going to get 2.8 with two. Correct. Absolutely. Right? So it gives you the fastest speed you can possibly get at this point in time. Correct? It, as a storage device, it is the, the, the fastest storage tier. And of course, it can be. It is to, intended to be used in conjunction with SSDs. So as the cache for SSDs to get better performance and better endurance out of your SSD investment. All right, it sounds pretty interesting. We're going to stop by the booth here in a minute, guys. So stay tuned, and we're going to take a look at the actual hardware. Thanks for stopping by the booth. Here. Thank you. Hi, guys. This is Paul with Tweet Town. We're now in the booth here with Viking Technology, taking a look at their new NV DIM technology. What's really impressive about this is the small form factor, and the kind of performance that you can that you can pull from this. And just such a nice small form factor. Now, when this, when you install solutions like this, could you give us a demonstration of how? Sure. Okay. So this is the the non-volatile memory module, plugging into a uh, standard x86 uh, Intel Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge based solution. Here, NVDIM plugs into the DRAM channel simply and of course it does have to have a connection to a super capacitor or ultra capacitor pack for the power in the event of a system power failure so you can see here the cap pack is mounted on the internal uh, of the chassis connects up simply and that provides the power source when the AC power is gone or the system has crashed so you plug that in and as quick as that as long as you have compatible hardware you're going to be looking at 1.4 million IOPS and 12 gigabytes a second and that is about as turnkey as it gets Alrighty, thanks.